miles on his flight to Paris at 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time this afternoon. And was right to the minute on his time schedule which carried him over the Great Circle to the French capital. Charles Lindbergh's daring quest to complete the first transatlantic solo flight is now in its 16th hour. Flying alone in the spirit of St. Louis, without a radio or any signaling device, Captain Lindbergh is now in the most hazardous stretch of his 3,000-mile non-stop flight from New York Ready. to Paris. According to the latest bulletin, Charles Lindbergh has been sighted 500 miles off the Irish coast. The plane was spotted by the Dutch freighter Hilders, which estimated Lindbergh's airspeed at 100 miles per hour. The early part of the journey over land and sea was made in shifting fogs and mists. Reports from Newfoundland and Nova Scotia stated that the weather must be newlyweds. All over the broad jump of the Atlantic, don't look like newlyweds to me. Pressure was mm. ideal conditions. You have to guess. Let's see how well you know your man. <laughs> Is that it? I hope you're not disappointed. Well, I think it's perfect. I just love it. You like it? <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think of that? That one there? Yeah. That's your boat? Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, Dave, it's incredible. Oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, Ivy, you got a christener. Oh, don't make me do that. We can't sail her until you do. Oh. Okay, uh, I hereby christen you. I can't do it. Ivy, just do it. Take the bottle and you just smash it. Yeah, but what if I put a big ding in your boat? All right. I'm going to make this easy for you. Good. Splash a little on her, all oh, right? I can do that. That's easy. Ready? I uh, hereby christen you! Oh, oh, oh God, come here. <laughs> Congratulations. Where are we? That's Venus. There's the North Star, Shell Beach, and there's the lighthouse. You know, now that the construction business is going so well, and since I've had a chance to do a few things, like buy this boat. Yeah. I've been thinking about what else I want in my life. What do you want? marry you. Come on. Oh, gosh. It's beautiful. Hey, let me help you. Thank you. <laughs> what happened to you? You're good. 
good swimmer. I've seen you swim in the ocean lots of times at night. I don't know. I just panicked. It felt like... Like what? Like someone was choking me. ever really sure about relationships? I don't expect it to be easy. I mean, nothing's easy. I just... Oh, I don't know. This just sounds so silly. Hey, this is me, Mel. I want to be sure Dave's my soulmate. I got to know that he's the one person in the world that's meant for me. Mommy! Hey, look. Hey, did you lose your mommy? That's okay. We'll find her. Tell me what she looks like. Um, she's dead. Okay. Uh, is that her over there? Mommy! Stacy, there you are. Oh, oh. oh thank you. Sure. <laughs> You're always so good with kids. No. You're the one who should be getting married and starting a family, not me. I don't know. Come on, Abby. I've known every guy you've ever been with since I stole Jimmy Hardy away from you. I gave him oh, to you. Right. And Dave is the best. Don't throw him away for some kind of fantasy about some kind of soulmate somewhere. Ooh, those are pretty trashy, huh? Madonna, maybe. I think they're hot. Don't even think about buying those shoes, girl. Come on. fine in a minute. How many of these dizzy spells have you had? This is the second one. You've been to a doctor? No, I'm sure it's nothing serious. How do you know? Maybe when you almost drowned, you damaged your brain from lack of oxygen or something. No, I'm not brain damaged. That's what all brain damaged people say. Come on. <laughs> I'm all right. It's over. Yeah, well, I want a second opinion. Come on. Okay. No, come on. How long have these been going on? Uh, about a week. Hmm. Could you be pregnant? I don't think so. I use birth control. Mm. Mm. Is that sensitive? Uh, no, you just startled me. Mm. Have you always had that mark? I was born with it. Mm. Never seen a birthmark quite like that. If this was one of Dave's jobs, this mess would have been cleaned up already. Well, the good news is I'm not pregnant. Oh, the doctor called. Yeah. So what's wrong with you? She doesn't know. She wants me to come in for some more tests. Oh. Are you going to go? I don't know. Abby, you've got to go. It could be something serious. It could be nothing. I'll wait and see. If it gets any worse, I'll go. Does Dave know you went to the doctor? No, and don't you tell him. He'll just worry. You seem so far away. You want to talk? Why did you name your boat Sarah? I like the name Sarah.
started joking. Are you okay? Can I get you something? No, I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'm all right. Ivy, what is going on? I better go. Excuse me, girls, but I am really lost. Can you tell me where Water Street is, please? Sure. It's, uh, you just go to the corner, hang a left, and it's maybe five or six miles. Five or six miles? Yeah. I'm not even close, am I? No. Well, thanks. Sure. Mm -mm. Come on, you're almost a married woman. I can enjoy the view. Sorry, the car won't start. Do you have a phone I could use, please? Oh, sorry, this place doesn't have a phone yet. Oh, damn. Um, well, where's the nearest payphone? There's a gas station about mm, half a mile due north. Mm. Well, you wouldn't happen to have a compass on you, would you? <laughs> no, it's that way. That way? Okay, well, thanks again. Sure. Ivy, you're drooling. No, I'm not. You know what? It's about lunchtime. I think I'm going to make a run. You want your usual? You're not serious. You're going after him. It's a lift to the gas station. What's wrong with that? It could be an axe murderer. Oh, well, you saw those pants. No way he's got an axe. Want to ride to the phone? Yeah, great. Thanks. Well, it's a real pleasure to have a lady rescue me for a change. Ah, oh, are you usually the rescuer? Sometimes. I hope you're not in a big hurry to get to Water Street. Well, actually, I am kind of late, but I'll tell you what, I'll pay a cab fare if you take me over there. You don't have to pay me. What brings you to Shell Beach? Business. What do you do? As little as possible. That doesn't sound very ambitious, coming from a man with a $50,000 car. 70. Oh, very impressive. You're not the kind of girl that's impressed by cars. Are you trying to impress me? Yeah. Just not working out real well. But I'll tell you what, why don't we start over? What's your name? Ivy. John Daniele. The John Daniele? John Paolo Daniele IV. Most people just call me Johnny. I don't tell me you're impressed by that. Well, you have to admit that's kind of impressive. Ivy, did your mother ever teach you not to believe anything you read in the tabloids? Yeah, and she also told me not to pick up strangers. Water. It's right up here. Thanks. Bon appetit. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'll have somebody pick the car up later, okay? Okay. Listen, can I repay the favor with dinner? Oh, that's okay. Uh, and uh, what about breakfast? Are you trying to pick me up? <laughs> I could have sworn you picked me up. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess I did. Well, in case you change your mind, I'm here most nights. It's uh, sort of an investment of mine, okay? Okay. Thanks again. Sure. Bye. Bye. You do 
want to dance. <laughs> you know, your ring is burning a hole in my pocket. You brought it with you? Yep. How's this for a romantic setting? Well, I think it would be nicer if we were alone. Mm. Women. You really like to milk the mama for all it's worth, don't you? Well, to be fair, you didn't get down on one knee. Would one knee satisfy you? Or do you want me to crawl? Do I have a choice? <laughs> you sure you want me to ask again? Yeah. You think my chances are good? Yes. Well, damn it, why don't you just say yes? No. Watching me suffer, don't you? Yes. Oh, just dance with me. I don't want to just dance with you. I want to marry you. I want us to have a family. Some women aren't cut out to be mothers. Children. Children that aren't mine. I don't think I'd be a very good mother. I don't want some little girl wandering around looking for for a mother who isn't there. What do you mean? What little girl? Listen. Remember this song? No. All day long I dream. are still the same Ooh, but when it's time to wake up to stop just seems a shame so all day long I dream of Caroline the folks all recognize the sign when the folks see me Disappointed. Buy a drink. You can 
buy me a glass of wine. Okay. Want some dinner to go with that wine? My mother always told me never to drink on an empty stomach. Smart woman. What do you mean? What do you want to eat? Oh, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even sure what some of this means. <laughs> what do you want? Same thing you do. To find my soulmate. I can't do this. You can do whatever you want to do. Well, there's something I have to do first. Okay. Just a minute. I know it's late, but I have to talk to you. What's wrong? I don't think we should get married. <laughs> okay. We don't have to get married. We can slow things down. I don't think we should see each other anymore. What? What are you talking about? Happened, but I have to end it. You don't have to do anything. You can't be serious, Ivy. But it's 2 a.m. You come over here dressed like a hooker to tell me you have to end it? Yeah. Heidi. We're right for each other. I wish I could be so sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's it. You wake me up in the middle of the night to break up with me. This couldn't wait till tomorrow. No. Why not? There's someone else. never like this. Sex isn't everything, girl. It's not just about sex. You think I'm making a mistake, don't you? Oh, no, no, but to dump a great guy like Dave for a guy like Johnny just doesn't make any sense. What do you mean a guy like Johnny? He's, he's smart and romantic and he's fun. He's a heartbreaker. He's with a different gorgeous actress, model, rock star every week. With a guy like Johnny, you might be the flavor of the month, but what about next month? Dave really loves you. He'd stick by you for a lifetime. Don't you think it's interesting that his car just happened to break down right there? I mean, he wasn't even supposed to be in the neighborhood, but there he was, right there. I've never felt like this before. I've never felt like this in high school with Dave. Never. I can't stop thinking about him. It's like I have no resistance to him. Maybe he's the one I've been looking for all my life, and that's why I freaked out when Dave asked me to marry him. Maybe... Maybe something inside me knew that Johnny was just around the corner. I hope you're right. Just don't go too fast. Oh, look. I have to have that. I see that pen, please?
thought she was someone else. Who? I don't know. What is it? What is going on? Something's happening to me. Something strange, and I don't know what it is. about as secure as a cereal box. You know, honey, you really should get some dead bolts. I worry about you. Hi. Hi. You left your jacket at my place. Oh, thanks. I thought you might need it. Yeah, I was wondering where I left it. Might have left some other things, you know, books and stuff, so stop by when you get a chance. Okay, I will. Oh, uh, Johnny, uh, Danielle, this is Dave Patterson. How you doing? Yeah. Here's your key. Thanks. I'll see you. anything physically wrong with you maybe the problem's psychological so you think it's all in my mind just because a problem may have psychological causes doesn't mean it's not real I know you're experiencing real physical distress but it's possible that these symptoms could be caused by anxiety or some repressed trauma of some kind I'm going to give you the name of a psychologist, a good one. You sure you don't want these? to be together. Yes. How do you know for sure? The other women I've been with, I felt less for as time went by. With you, I feel more. I never meant for it to turn out like this. I never wanted to hurt you. This isn't about me, Ivy. It's about you. I know. You've been wonderful. as a child? No, nothing like that. Why? Well, Dr. Samford thinks you may be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder or delayed stress syndrome. Everything you've been experiencing, the dizzy spells, nightmares, the anxiety attacks, the fears, these are all possible symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Well, I don't remember any big traumas. You know, my life has been pretty dull up until now. I see. Now, these flashes that, uh, that occur with the dizziness, 
Could they be memories? I don't think so. I mean, they're not people or things I recognize. Well, maybe they're memories that you've been repressing. Why would I do that? Because of something frightening. So frightening, you simply can't allow yourself to remember it. But it's hard to keep a lid on something like that. It usually pushes its way out. One of these flashes was triggered by uh, someone touching this mark on my neck. I always thought it was a birthmark. As far as I know, I've always had it. But Dr. Sanford doesn't think it looks like a birthmark. It, it looks like an old scar. Maybe something did happen. Would you be willing to try and find out what? How? Have you ever been hypnotized? At the bottom of the stairs is a long hallway with doors on either side. On each door is a number that represents a different year of your life. If you open door number six, you'll be six years old. Number seven, you'll be seven, and so on. Now, Ivy, go to the door where you'll find the answer to the question about the mark on your neck. See yourself going to the door that has that secret behind it. Whatever it is, you're ready to open the door and look at it. You're strong enough to face it. Are you there? Are you at the door? Yes. Good. What number is on it? 31. 31. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Now, open the door and go through it. You're perfectly safe from any danger. Go through the door. What do you see? My apartment building. And where is that? Shell Beach? No, Buffalo. You're in Buffalo, New York? Right. Why are you in Buffalo? Because I live here. How long have you lived in Buffalo? All my life. How old are you? 31. or something? No, you came out pretty suddenly, though. Do you remember anything? No, I, I think I was dreaming. Uh, no, I don't, I don't remember anything. That's all right. That's why we've been tape recording this. And you weren't dreaming. You were in a deep state of hypnosis, as deep as I've seen. Ivy, how old are you? I'm 30. I'll be 31 next month. You're only 30, and yet you went through the door marked 31. And if each door is another year of your life, then there shouldn't be a door 31 yet. And even if there was, what could be behind it? The future? No, it, it seemed more like the past. Have you ever lived in Buffalo, New York? No. No, I've lived in the South all my life. You ever been in Buffalo? No, never. Why? And you've never been married? You've never had a child? Ivy, who's Sarah? Does the name Sarah mean anything to you? Almost noon. Oh, God. I'm gonna have to teach you to keep more sophisticated hours. Don't we have to check out? No, don't be silly. We never have to check out any place. 
Oh, come on. You don't want me to think you're lazy, do you? <laughs> well, I am lazy. I make no apologies for it. You're a tough one to figure out. Mm. What do you really want? Please. It's way too early for philosophical questions. Okay. Then what do you want from me? for yet another niece or nephew. I don't even know which one. I'd take you with me, but it, it's incredibly dull. That's okay. I probably wouldn't fit in anyway. Hell, I don't fit in. I hate my family, but I can't afford to alienate them anymore than I already have. So when do you leave? Oh, I got a flight about 2 o'clock. Today? Yeah, today. Don't worry about it. I won't be gone that long. You just keep the bed warm for me. Friday's my birthday. Will you be back? No, but I miss your birthday. Well, you've missed them all so far. Yeah. Well, I don't ever want to miss another chance to spoil you rotten. Weird. The doctor said the name Sarah, and I just freaked out. I don't know why. The only Sarah I've ever known was Dave's boat. Why would I flip over that? You're not jealous of the boat, are you? Wait a sec. When I was little, I used to have this doll, my favorite one. I named it Sarah. That's weird. Yeah, maybe that's it. You're suffering from a severe doll deficiency. Very funny. No, seriously, Eddie. Maybe you're getting close to finding something out. I think you should go back to this doctor. I don't know. It's a strange feeling. I mean, I don't know what I'm saying when I'm hypnotized, and I can't remember anything. Well, you can't give up without at least trying again. It's a little weird for me. I'll think about it. Mm. You want to give it a try, see if it works? Oh, yeah, sure. Time for bed.
You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> I ordered good weather for you for your birthday. I'm going to have to get my money back now. <laughs> Are you cold? Just a little bit. Well, I'll give you my jacket. Oh, no, that's hey, right. I insist. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so good to me. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, damn. What? I forgot your um, birthday present in the glove compartment in the car. I'll be right back. Okay. Don't move. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? You going through my pockets? No, I'm not going through your pockets. I was just cold and I happened to stumble. Are you trying thing. to spoil this? No. No? Just a natural talent, I guess, huh? Well, why did you tell me you were going to Palm Beach when you really went to Atlantic City? It's none of your business. Why do you get off interrogating me? What are you, my wife? No, I'm not sure. Damn. Stop, will you wait a minute? Leave me alone. Stop, will you wait a minute? Stop! Cool. What are you gonna do, hitchhike home? Now, come on, just, just calm down for a minute. I'm sorry, I overreacted. Why did you lie? I didn't lie. I was supposed to go to Palm Beach and I didn't. Why not? Because I got in a fight with my father over the phone. I wanted an advance on next month's interest from my trust fund. He said he wouldn't give it to me, so I said to hell with it, I'm not going to the baptism. So why didn't you come back to the hotel? Because it was your birthday. I want to be able to lavish some money on you until the first of the month I'm broke. Okay, you happy now? So I changed my ticket to Atlantic City. Then I want enough so I could throw you a decent birthday bash. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm sorry I did. No, I'm sorry. Look, if you want me, you have to trust me completely. No questions. I require total loyalty, complete surrender. You think you can do that? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Come here. Where are we going? Right over there. What are you doing? Hey, come on. Page by midnight. Why don't you do let me all work done now? So it's your birthday. You decide. What place am I? Maybe we should fight more often. <clears throat> That'd be fine with me.
surrendered to me? Yes. Good girl. Mm. Now step through that door again, Ivy. Number 31. Are you there? Yes. Who am I speaking to? Grace. Grace. Your name is Grace. What's your last name, Grace? Lovell. Grace Lovell. How old are you, Grace? 31. Where do you live? 1711 East Bay Street, Buffalo, New York. Are you married? Yeah. What's your husband's name? Sam. How did you meet Sam? At a fight. <laughs> hit it off right away. He asked me to marry him. It took me by surprise. It was in the locker room right before the biggest fight of his life. The one he hoped would launch his career. But it was a massacre. He was beaten so badly. You see, the problem with Sam was underneath, he's just too soft. Yes. Yes, I will marry you. I never loved him more than that moment when he'd lost everything. We were married a month later. That was his last fight. I never realized that after he quit boxing, it would kill his spirit like that. After the baby was born, he never touched me again. I was young. I'd never been with anybody before Sam. I thought it was my fault that something was wrong with me. I didn't know what to do. Move forward a few years. How's it now? The baby is wonderful. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. We named her Sarah. Things are worse with Sam. He has a job as a cable splicer for Buffalo Gas and Electric. After work, he just comes home and sits and stares out the window. Sometimes listens to the radio, drinks a beer. Our house is like somebody died. But I don't blame Sam. I'm being bad. Being bad? How are you being bad? Going out, drinking, dancing, just trying to have some fun. Tell me about that. I'm hitchhiking. Isn't it dangerous for a woman to be hitchhiking alone? It makes it more exciting. Is that why you're doing it? Because it's exciting. I never know who I'm going to end up with. That's what makes it so exciting. Does Sam know you're going out? Does your husband know? If ignorance is bliss. He must be in ecstasy. <laughs> It's bad. We're fighting all the time. Does he hit you? No, he threatens to hit me sometimes, but Sam wouldn't hit a woman. Do you still love him? It's not that I don't love him or he doesn't love me. We're just no good for each other. Why do you stay with him? I don't want to hurt him. If I took the baby, it would kill him. And I can't leave Sarah. 
Go a little further forward in time. Now tell me what's happening. Oh, no. What's the matter? Oh, no. He's going to do something terrible. You're completely protected. You're safe and secure. You can see what's happening, but you're detached, as if you're watching it on a screen. You ready to go on? Now, see if you can pinpoint the time. When is this? What year? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, look for a clue. What's happening around you? People are talking about that flyer. What flyer? Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh. No, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, I'm really in Dutch now. Sam found out about Jake. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you out now. You're gonna wake up. Ah! Ivy? 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 Your name is Ivy Robinson. You're in Shell Beach. Ivy! Stop it! Who killed you? <laughs> Ivy? What? You're okay. You're safe. You just came out of hypnosis. Listen. You said your name was Grace Lavelle, that you live at 1711 East Bay Street in Buffalo, New York? I don't... And you said that, or, or rather, Grace said that you have a husband named Sam and a daughter named Sarah. Does any of this mean anything to you? Uh... This secondary personality who calls herself Grace only comes out under hypnosis, right? Yeah, as far as I know. Ivy, I don't know who Grace is, whether she's part of your subconscious or part of your past, but whoever she is, I think she may be able to teach you something about yourself. But the only life that matters here is yours. Her life is over. What do you mean her life is over? Well, apparently Grace Lavelle died in 1927. Are you saying she's some kind of ghost? No. No, professionally and personally, I don't believe in ghosts. I believe in the subconscious. Dropped you off in the Lincoln. Just some guy who gave me a ride. My truck broke down, so I hitchhiked home. Your truck broke down, so you hitchhiked? Yeah. Are you crazy? Why don't you call me or call a cab? You get killed hitchhiking. Yeah, I'm fine. Forget about it. I'm not gonna forget about it. 
You are deliberately trying to humiliate me. I was not. I saw you laughing with him. I saw you bending over so you could look down your blouse. Oh, come on. You took his business card so you could call him back later. What? Where is it? Oh, we... Give it to me. Give it to me. Stop it. What is it? The guy just wanted to give me a ride home. Get off of me. You stop? Get off of me. Here it is. You want to play, huh? I don't want to play. Get out! Just get out! Hey. Hey. Oh my God, what happened? You were right about Johnny. He did that? Yeah. You all right? I'm okay. You called the police? You, you broke it off with him, though, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, he's still got a key. That means he could come back. You gotta change the locks. so strongly before, but it was unforgivable. You hit me. I know. I know. I'm, I'm truly sorry. I swear to you, it'll never happen again. Well, will you accept these even if you won't accept my apology? I do love you. Makes me forget. Forget what? Forget I'm married. Forget I'm a mother. Forget everything. How'd you meet Jake? At a blind pig. What's a blind pig? A speakeasy. You know, where they sell bootleg whiskey. Everybody's looking for the real McCoy. It's not polite to stare. I've been called a lot of things. Polite ain't one of them. You never learned any manners? Well, my eye admires, my heart desires. You see what I like? I grab it. I could get you into a lot of trouble. Yeah, always. You're married, ain't you? I'm a housewife. No, no, no you're not. You're a huntress. Okay, I'm gonna bring you out now. You'll wake up when I say your name and touch your shoulder. Ivy. Hi. What do you remember? There may be some bits and pieces there, but I don't see the faces. 
Well, here, why don't you listen to these? Maybe they'll help fill in some of the gaps. Do you believe in reincarnation? I looked it up. Buddhists believe that we come back and meet the same people. Do you think that's possible? Well, you don't have to believe in reincarnation to see that most of us are trapped in repeating patterns. We keep choosing these negative, destructive patterns because they're familiar to us. Most of us don't make the same mistake twice. We make it over and over again. If we could learn from the past, we wouldn't have to repeat it. I wonder if I could be Grace reincarnated. Ivy, we don't even know that Grace Lavelle even existed. But she seems so real. I mean, I can't believe I just made her up. If she did exist, it should be pretty easy to verify. But I gotta say, I believe your problems are here today, not in some other time or place. I'm going to Buffalo. Oh, I don't think that's a very good idea. I have to know. Ivy, wait. Here. Be very careful. And call me if you need to. That closes your account. Thanks. I'll deal with it. Did he do that? I've got to go. What's the matter? Did you find the magazine? Yeah, I've got it right here. The cover story, page 29. The South's 10 most eligible bachelors? What, what is Johnny one of them? Page 29, hurry up. Oh, my God. It's not him. I mean, he's not who he said he was. Ivy, please, you have got to get out of there. He's some kind of a con man or a criminal or something. Please, get out, Ivy, get out. Tell me how much a bus ticket is, please, to Buffalo, New York. Going somewhere? Yes, I am. You can't walk away from this, and you know it. It's too strong. This only happens once in a lifetime. For better or worse, we're fated to be with each other. Till death do us part. I don't know who you are or what your name is, but I want you to leave now. Well, so that's it. You're in love with the name. The name and the fame, but it was never me, was it? No, it was you, but it's over. But you're the only one for me. There is nobody else for me. Maybe we've known each other before, and that's why the pull was so strong. But I have to stop it now before it's too late. It's already too late. No, it's not. Johnny, please just leave. Don't make me call the police. You're so naive. The police can't help you. If I wanted to hurt you, nobody could stop me. <laughs>
want me to meet him here? Yeah. He's in the back room playing poker. He came with you some money. I know. Johnny? No, you know, baby. I figured you'd be back. I have to talk to you. Go ahead. I want my money back. <laughs> what are you talking about? The money you took from my purse. It's me. You're never going to believe where I am. I'm heading north to Buffalo in a $70,000 car. No, you're not with him. Just his car. My truck is dead and he stole my money, so I stole his car. You what? Are you crazy? You'll go to jail if he doesn't kill you. Ivy, he's a criminal. You don't know what he'll do. He'll have to find me first. Now, it's all so weird. I think it has something to do with the past. It's like everything's happening all over again. shoes I've had my eye on. How's Sam taking it? He's acting like a crazy man. I'm scared of what he might do. He said he'd kill me if I got in that car.
What's your last name, Grace? Lovell. Grace Lovell. How old are you, Grace? 31. Where do you live? 1711 East Bay Street, Buffalo, New York. Sarah picked it out. Do you like it? Sarah picked it out? Yes, Sarah picked it out. If you don't believe me, ask her. Where are you going, Grace? Millie's. Sam, please, let's not fight. I'm sick of fighting. But Sarah? She's asleep. What if she wakes up? If there's a problem and you don't know what to do, take her to your mother's. I'm looking for some information about a local murder. What date? Um, 1927. Uh, can you be more specific? It was around the date of Lindbergh's flight. May 20th. Lindbergh on way to Paris passes over Nova Scotia. Lone pilot gets jump on other ocean flyers. Buffalo had two newspapers in 1927. Thank you.
did you find me? Don't be stupid. I always know where to find you. Look, here are the keys. Just take the car and leave me alone. You can keep the money. It's not over. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm here to give you what you're asking me for. I'm not asking you for anything. Oh, yes, you are. You're asking me to punish you. Now, here, put these on. Put them on! Get those shoes to make it look like a whore. Of course, that's what you are. Get in. Get in. Jake, I don't want to do this anymore. Where do you think you're going? Ah! These, where'd you get these? They make you look like a whore, of course, that's what you are, so I guess it's all right.
explain how I know this, but your mother loved you very much. She made a terrible mistake. She never meant to leave you. Forgive me. Oh, wait. Look. You're all right? You've had a, a good life? Oh, yes, I've been very lucky. I had a wonderful father. 